and welcome to Followed by a Bear's annual Night of One Act. Tonight you will see two separate one act plays written, directed, teched, and performed by St. Joe's students. We ask that you please take this time to silence all cell phones and open any loud snacks. We also ask that you remain seated throughout the performance. Following our first play, The Reunion, there will be a brief intermission. Thank you for supporting the student arts at St. Joe's and enjoy the show. Union in Europe. Now, Kendall, unless the Rugby League European Federation wants to pay for it. <laughs> Didn't think so. Besides, uh, Fitzgerald was our class sponsor, and she owns the place, which made my life easier. It's kind of pathetic, isn't it? What is? I mean, doesn't she have anything better to do than hang out at a reunion, at a reunion that isn't even hers? She is our class sponsor. And she retired the year that we graduated. I guess some people just can't let go of high school. Yeah, uh, I need some air. Uh, uh, okay, buddy. Right, now, where was I? Uh, <clears throat> and then she said that she would do anything to be by my side when I win the election. Now, don't get me wrong, she was hot, but not quite first lady material, you know what I mean? Too tall. Anyway. I'm really glad to see you guys are making it. Oh, we wouldn't miss it, would we, Brad? Huh? You did get our invitation, right, Andrew? We'd love it if our old classmates would come to our reception. Uh, no, actually. Brad, this is the sixth person who said they had not missed any classes. You did send them out, right? Um. <laughs> Fine, it's not important. <laughs> oh, hey, there she is. Uh, why don't you guys go in and grab another drink? It's open bar until midnight. Hey everybody, look, it's Anna and um, Baywatch. Oh, 
What took you guys so long? Don't tell me you ran here. This is my nightmare. Anna Lawrence, how have you been? Hey, Andrew. Wow, I'm, look at you. You look great. Thank you, Mr. President. I heard you were on Law & Order. Oh, you heard about that? It was on the alumni newsletter. Looks like they were right about you, Anna. <laughs> and what about you, Baywatch? Oh, she's fine. I had to practically beg her to come out tonight, though. Oh, too busy for your Excelsior family now, huh? No, 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 of course not. Right, Char? And, uh, what is it you're doing again? Well, I... Well, th that's very interesting. Now, uh, Anna, uh, why don't we grab a drink? Catch up? I would love to. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hard to believe he'll run for office one day. <laughs> I'm gonna flee the country if that ever happens. <laughs> oh my god, Vinny, is that you? Good to see you, Charlotte. Good to see you too. I'm sorry I didn't come over sooner. I didn't recognize you. Guess I haven't changed much. Oh no, that's not it at all. I just wasn't expecting to see a friendly face tonight, that's it. I'm surprised you're even here. Then again, Jesse's here, so... What? Uh, no. Uh, isn't he playing football off in Manchester somewhere? You mean rugby? And I'm pretty sure I saw him a couple minutes ago. You know what? Uh, tell Anna I went home. Relax. I could be wrong. I seriously doubt it, but I could be. Are you sure? <clears throat> Positive. Stay, Charlotte. I could use the company. Well, I am designated driver tonight anyway, so... Great. Wait, are you still embarrassed about... No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh... You look great. <laughs> thank you. Um, so do you and Anna. Well, thank you. You should go tell her that. I'm sure she'd love to hear it. But anyways, enough about us. What about you? I heard you were featured in some medical journals. Congratulations. Oh, no. That's nothing. Are you serious? They say you revolutionized medicine all before the age of 25? I figure you want to rub it right in Mr. President's face. <laughs> the bionic prosthetics are just tinker toys of mine, really. And Andrew wouldn't care about that. Far more excited about showing off my girlfriend. Girlfriend? Yeah. What, you don't believe me? She's real this time. I have pictures. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, she just must really be something then. Is she here? No, but she's real. You'll see her. She's just running a little late. She had to um, deal with a client. Uh, but what have you been up to? Uh, well, just some writing, taking some classes, when I'm not working in the bookstore anyways. Oh, well, that's cool, I guess. Yeah. Hello, Excelsior. <laughs> Brad. Uh, uh, hey, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Archie Nidron, this is. Sure. Nice oh. to see you. Oh, Brittany? Hi, Andrew. Oh my god, how, how are you? Oh, so busy. <laughs> Just wrapped up a new movie last week. Oh, anything we would have heard of. No. Oh, too bad. Yeah, it's an avant-garde foreign film, but the producers say it's a shoo-in for the Keynes Film Festival. Oh. Wow, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Anna here was just falling on. Oh, isn't that cute? Some people never change. Yeah, well, your shoes aren't you gonna go help her? Yeah, she's fine. Oh, Trina, over here. <laughs> Charlotte, come here. This is my girlfriend, Trina. Uh, hi, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> isn't she pretty? Just look at those eyes. I mean, tell her she's pretty. Oh, <laughs> uh. Uh, I mean, yeah, you are. Thank you. So are you. Thanks. Uh, so what do you do? Well, oh, she works at Bartlett Communications and Technology. We met when I presented my research last July. Uh, cool. What brought you to Bartlett? It's funny, Char. Oh, that's such a boring story. Come on, babe, let's grab you a drink. Shar, you want anything? Uh, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> You believe this? I cannot fucking believe this. She is all over everybody. Glad you came. What does it look like? Well, we made an appearance. Why don't we just go? You promised. Is it really worth it if we're both miserable? Why do you care what they think? Did you really think it was going to be any different? I don't know. I guess I was just hoping she would have peaked in high school. Well, I, I guess. I'll just have to beat her at her own game. That'll show her. What? Little Miss Microphone Thief isn't gonna steal my thunder again. <laughs> Never. Again. <laughs> I thought you were over that. And I was. But seeing her tonight with that smirk on her face just brought it all back to me. How much have you had to drink tonight? Just this one? Or two? 
And that's enough until you need something. Hey, everybody, let's do shots! Woo! No, don't you can't. Damn, go. Jump, 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 jump. Hey, that Brittany girl seems familiar. I feel like I've seen her somewhere. No way! She just has one of those faces, you know? No, really. She looks kind of like that girl. Excuse who's... us, hot couple coming through. <laughs> How's Anna? Is she doing okay? She definitely won't be in the morning, that's for sure. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> on three. One, two, three. Class of 2014! <laughs> <laughs> so, Charlotte, right? Yeah. How did you and Minnie meet? Um, Dad partner, dropping through four years of science. He's probably the smartest guy I know. He must be really proud. Well, not as proud as I am to have her on my own. Hey, how is everybody doing over here? And sure, Jesse Davenport is here. Football player, right? No, it's rugby, babe. Football is strictly an American thing. You guys went to high school with him? You bet we did. <laughs> now, it reminds me of this uh, one story where Baywatch over here was. You know what? I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Come on, Bay Watch, it was five years ago. So, everybody, this is my incredibly hot girlfriend, Trina. What do you think about that, Andrew, huh? Anyone want another? Yeah, I'm a fan of your work. I've seen all your movies. One word and you're dead. You got it? I want another one, too. Oh, but you haven't been my super hot girlfriend, Trina. What? <laughs> with you tonight. What? Seriously? All you've been doing is trying to show me off. Another. Sure about that, Andrews? How about some water? Uh, the Alumni Association isn't paying you to serve water. Another! <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, so, um, what are you drinking? Whiskey. Yourself? Um, scotch at the moment? Yeah. Forgive me, uh, I don't actually recognize your face. Did you just come here with someone? It's me, Arnold. Uh, Arnold Heimowitz? Weird Arnold? Wait, you look so different. Yeah, that's usually what happens. <laughs> uh, uh, who wants another round? Center, but never talked. Still got an A in participation, though. Guess she felt sorry for me. Are you kidding? Everything you wrote was unbelievable. Really? Yeah, I remember this piece about your grandma's funeral and how you juxtaposed it with Snow White. You remember that? Of course, it broke my heart. I never thought anyone really noticed me. <laughs> what? People called you Baywatch for years. Oh my god, if one more person calls me that tonight. Hey. You gotta admit, whoever came up with it put a lot of thought into it. It's creative, surely you can appreciate that. So, uh, what are you doing out here all by yourself? I can ask you the same question. <laughs> wow, for someone so quiet, you're sassy. The quiet ones usually are. <laughs> what are you up to these days? Uh, just taking some classes, writing, but I'm uh, not working the bookstore anyways. Wow, that's kind of like an English major's wet dream, isn't it? No. <laughs> Publish any of your own stuff? Uh, none of it's finished yet. Why don't you submit your stuff? I mean, people will read it. It just has to be perfect. None of it's there yet. I'm not sure it ever will be. Uh, but, but what about you? Uh, you're in the off-season for rugby, right? That's why you're here, right? Well... No, actually. Oh, so all the fame and fortune must have gotten tiring then, huh? No. Oh, so you just really wanted to see everyone? No. <laughs> what is it? I'm, uh, taking a break from rugby. Really? Why? Well, I, uh, can't play anymore. What? 
<laughs> I guess that didn't end up in the alumni newsletter. What happened? I mean, you look great. Uh, I mean, healthy. <laughs> torn ACL a couple months ago. Can't play now, maybe not ever again. I didn't hear about it in the news or anything. I don't make the news here. <coughs> they know? No, and I want to keep it that way. Your secret's safe with me. <laughs> kind of an embarrassing story, actually. Not quite as bad as the time you went face first into a locker, but it's close. <laughs> you saw that? Nah, Andrew did. Told me all about it. Said you were staring at me the whole time. Of all the times anybody sees me, people saw that? I thought it was kind of cute. You, you did? Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, no, no, I, I, I get it. I'm a nobody now. Uh, no, Jesse, that's not Jeez, it at all. These kids are drinking me out of house. Oh, sorry, you do. Uh, uh, didn't mean to interrupt. It's getting pretty rowdy in there. It's fine, Miss Fitz. I was just leaving. I hope you aren't looking for the scotch. Andrew's gone through it all. Hasn't gone through the water, has he? Nope. Won't talk to stuff. You gotta stay in shape, even on the off season. You can't be too careful. Uh, this way is quicker. <laughs> what else my star pupil doing this fine evening? Fine, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Bullshit. Excuse me? You heard me. I don't know what you're talking about. I just came out here to get some air and- Don't give me that. I can tell you're miserable. I'm fine, really. All right. If you're fine, how about we head back inside? I'm sure there are plenty of people you want to catch up with. I thought so. What's going on, Charlotte? I just really didn't want to see anyone tonight. I haven't thought about this place since the day we left, and I was scared to see everyone. Why is that? Don't you see? Vinny's work is saving lives. Andrew, Andrew will somehow become president one day, and Brad and Delilah are engaged, and then there's me. Yeah? Don't you get it? Everyone has their lives together, and I don't. Don't be ridiculous. You may not be able to see it, but I know that you're all hiding something. How do you- ah! You did that on purpose! Porn! <laughs> She's a porn star. 
Wait, we watched it. That's her. what I was trying to tell you. How about that? <laughs> Next time you want to think you're better than everyone, why don't you think about like, being lying to us all night? Is that why you've been staring at her all night? Have you watched her movies? <laughs> no, babe, of course not. <laughs> Don't lie to me. I mean, maybe you saw them once or twice. Why does that bother you? Why are you looking at other girls? Dee, come on, tell me ridiculous. But you keep looking at her. I'm a guy. It's what I do. I can't help it. You're a guy. <laughs> That's your excuse. I didn't mean like that. I mean, we'll talk about this later. Unbelievable. Dee, wait. Porn. It's not what you do. <laughs> no one turns you down? I see why now. No. Okay, look, I didn't land any conventional acting careers. <laughs> I know it. But I didn't just wake up one day and decide to do it either, okay? I was broke, I had bills, a director found me, and I knew what I was getting myself into. How are you not ashamed of it? I'm not! This is my career! Then why hide it from us? Because I knew you wouldn't respect me for choosing to be in this industry. Most people don't. People think that women who do porn are powerless. What kind of new age feminist bullshit is this? How can you actually think this is a career? Oh, you just think that you're hot shit because of one TV gig. You know what? You win! Everyone, please, you all just had too much to drink. Let's not spoil the night! See, Char, told you it was worth it coming tonight. You are not serious right now. What? Did you not just see her? You went too far tonight. Oh, come on. She hasn't changed since high school. Plus, the way she talked to Andrew just then, she got what she deserved. I thought you were better than that. Oh, okay, whoa, well, calm down. What's your problem? Other than the fact I haven't seen you all night when you wanted me here so badly for the fact that you can't get over high school either. Look, Char, I'm sorry that you're pissy because you couldn't hook up with Jesse or whatever, but... Char, Char, I... So these are really the people you want to impress. Well, not all of them, but why do you ask? They don't seem like good people. It's not true. They're just not honest about who they are. You think you're better than them? Honestly? A bit. Why? Look at them. Look at you. What do you mean? You've been acting like an asshole all night. And for what? To impress people you don't even like? The guy I've seen tonight isn't one I want to be with. <laughs> problem is every guy watches porn it's not that it's just what you've seen differently you used to be so lively and fun and now you don't pay any attention to me what are you getting at do you even love me anymore i mean yeah yeah <laughs> that's all you have to say would you just shut up hey don't talk to her like that don't piss off Good, you ran out of there pretty fast. I'm fine. Sure, because it really doesn't seem like it. I really don't want to talk about it, Jesse. You know, you can trust me, right? Well, if you ever want to talk. I've been confused for a while. We all are, man. <laughs> None of us know what we're doing. It's not what I meant. Oh. 
I think I might be gay. You've been with so many girls. It's all an act. I, I, all four years, I didn't know what I wanted or who I even was. I, I just kept thinking that maybe if I could trick myself into liking them, that it would work out. And even after we graduated, I just kept on thinking. If I found the right girl, that it wouldn't fucking matter. Andrew, you know there's nothing wrong with being gay, right? For me, there is. Everyone wants to see a politician with a woman on his arm. I'll be lucky if I survive at my dad's law firm, let alone a fucking election. You are one of the most charismatic guys I know. People will love you, and things are changing. You have nothing to prove. Plus, I'll be here for you through it. I'm not going anywhere. Thanks. Huh. No wonder you couldn't keep a girl for more than a month. So we get a couple more drinks. I think I'm actually good on drinks. Let's let's just go back inside. just happened and I think there are some things that shouldn't have been said. Yeah, that right. I just never expected you would have ended up in adult movies. Me neither. <coughs> I mean, I tried some modeling gigs, acting, jobs. I was laughed out of auditions. Laughed out! And this is what I thought. I did really well. I tanked. You told me I had the right look. But you know, there's really nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm glad it happened. The studio pays me well, my family's okay with it. Wow. <coughs> my family just started coming around to the idea of me being on TV. When I was in high school, they wouldn't even come to see the shows. And the one time I convinced them to, well, you know what happened. Sorry about that. Yeah, well to move on eventually. Yeah. Hey, Britt, can I ask you something? Sure. Do you feel safe doing porn? Yeah, of course. What do you mean? Well, during college, I went to this one audition I saw on Craigslist. Thought it was a normal audition, but when I got there, the guy was filming with this crappy $20 camcorder. Long story short, he wanted me to have sex with him on camera. I don't think I've ever run out of a room so fast. Oh my god, no way. Well, my experience has been very different. I mean, it's definitely not for everyone, but... You do know I work in, like, an actual studio, right? With, like, regulations and... Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, actually, I have no idea how it works. <laughs> Do you want to go back inside? Yeah. Come on. Let's go see what Booze Fitzgerald still has left. <laughs> checked earlier but only found Andrew. How's he doing? Good, I hope. Things got pretty intense in there. Yeah, it did. How are you doing? Could be better. Wasn't expecting a remake of Lord of the Flies, but... Is that the, uh, one with the mice? <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> Kinda sucks to see they still have it better. What do you mean? about it. Yeah, they weren't completely honest about with their lives, but at least they know what they're doing. My injury made me lose the one thing I knew what to do, and now I'm just lost. You think you're the only person who doesn't know what they're doing? You don't get it. I had everything, and the universe just took it away. At least you got a taste of the life you wanted. 
you and everyone else at this stupid reunion is getting their engaged or getting their dream job or getting everything they wanted. I'm working just as hard and not getting anywhere. How do you think that makes me feel? You have a plan, Charlotte. Rugby's all I was ever good for, and now I'm just lost. There's more to you than just rugby, Jesse. You think I fell for you because of it? That's not it. Not it at all. Then what did you care about? I cared about who you were as a person. You were popular and everyone loved you, but you didn't let that get to your head. You always spoke your mind even when no one else would. And you acted like you could have anything you wanted. That's the Jesse I cared about. You're the uh, first person to say that. Yeah, well, I mean it. I should, uh, you know, uh, go, uh, check on Andrew. It's just as hard trying to control these kids now as it was back then. You ever try helping some of them? Well, you're all adults. You can handle yourselves. But uh, look on the bright side. It's like I told you. You're not the only one trying to figure things out. I mean, hell, I don't even have it figured out. That doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it would. <laughs> this entire night sucked. I knew if I came here, I'd just feel bad about myself. But seeing how everyone else was lying, it almost makes me feel sad for them. Why is that? I know I wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, but at least I didn't lie about it. Well, not everyone thinks to be truthful the same way you do. That's no reason to tear each other apart for it. Seeing even Anna acting the way she was makes me believe we're all just fuck-ups. You know, sometimes I wish I was the one that was still lost and everyone else had what they wanted. Not everyone has confidence in themselves to feel the same way you do. What confidence? Come with me, Charlotte. to make a speech at these things. What? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't think I'd have to speak to most of you tonight. I didn't even think I'd make it here past 10, but here we are. Seeing you all again brought back some unsavory memories and seeing how you all seem to have your life together, well, drove me crazy. But then Mrs. Fitzgerald and all of her infinite wisdom taught me that you're all just better at hiding things than, we, than I am. I know we all thought our wives would fall into place after school, but for how smart we all are, it was pretty stupid to think it'd be true. <laughs> I know I don't know where my life is going exactly, but it's kind of comforting to know that none of us really do. And you know what? That's, that's okay. We still have time to figure out who we are and what we really want. And to fix our mistakes and even make some new ones. Life won't be perfect. It's confusing and frustrating, but it can be magical too. I know we might not all get what we want, but the chance that we could get everything is enough for me to get out of bed every morning. I think that's something we all need to remember. That confidence. All right, everyone, thanks for coming. Drive home safely, and please don't leave the place too messy. Last call! Hey. Hey. Listen, um, thanks 
for sticking up for me before earlier. Oh, you heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I know what you're going through. You did? Yeah. Trust me, you'll figure it out. You take care of yourself. Wait, uh, let me make it up to you. Sure. I'm free next Friday. You could buy me a drink. Please. No more drinks. Um, I was thinking maybe I could buy you dinner or something. Why don't you walk me to my ride while I think about that? Uh, sure. That was a great speech you gave. Thanks. I think it's great some people can be honest with themselves. <laughs> Charlotte, I just want to apologize. I was kind of a douche tonight. You said it, I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry to you too. I won't let it happen again. I promise. All right, fine. You know what? You look like the real winner tonight. Thanks, Charlotte. Trina, maybe you can help me feel like a winner tonight when we get home. <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> You take care of yourself now, Vinny. You too, Charlotte. Bye, it was nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> promise me we'll meet up soon. I promise, and I'm serious. I'll talk to my producers about getting you on the next episode. <laughs> Thank you, but I'm, I'm happy where I am. You enjoy it, though. I'll see ya. Bye. See you, Charlotte. I see you two made up. Yeah, feels good, too. Look, I'm really sorry about the It's whole... okay. Cool. So, uh, do you reg regret coming tonight? Well... Hey, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was really cool seeing you. We've been talking for a little while. Do you want to get together sometime and buy us dinner? Uh, yeah, sure. That'd be great, Jesse. <laughs> Did Jesse Davenport just ask you out? You have to tell me how your night went. I'll tell you everything when we get home. I'm done here. Looks like they're closing up. Oh, I'll, I'll meet you in the car. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you answered your question. I think coming here was exactly what I did. <laughs> Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the reunion. We ask you now to sit back, relax, and enjoy One Hit Wonderland. Hey guys, this is your MTV News Report. I'm Erica Nichols, straight out of One Hit Wonderland. In this segment, we had MTV News track down the artists who peaked early in their careers, then disappeared. Last week, we took a look at the Buggles, who moved on to great careers in the British music industry after their 1980 hit, Video Killed the Radio Star. This week, we go back across the pond and across decades to examine the friendship of four artists in Cleveland and what happened to them after their hits. We begin with Crimson Duke. Duke was found wandering the cornfields of Iowa in the late 1960s and is often known as a founding father of punk rock in the 70s, peaking in 1979 with the number 14 hit, War on the War on Drugs. <laughs> incredible tolerance for drugs and hard partying. And in the years since, he's been arrested 10 times on drug charges across the US, with the most recent being two weeks ago, where Cleveland police caught him carrying half a pound of peyote. 
Actually, he's been missing for five days, so anyone with knowledge of his whereabouts is asked to call 1-800-CRIME-STOPPERS. <laughs> Meanwhile, in another genre, Debbie Jo, otherwise known as DJ Carpenter, was on top of the world in 1998 thanks to her top 10 country ballad, When I Rode You, dedicated to her late <laughs> Industry, became a born-again Christian, married televangelist Walter Carpenter III, and she's now a mom of six kids. And now for a little more of a local celebrity. In 1993, the city of Cleveland had one of the most depressing years in its history. And this is Cleveland. <laughs> At Christmas time, though, a sleeper hit by then college student Holly Weiss helped to turn the town around when Let's Have a Cleveland Christmas peaked at number eight on the Billboard charts. <laughs> let's have a Cleveland Christmas, let's spread the cheer and light, pass the pierogies and kielbasa too. So, where is she now? Well, fittingly enough, Weiss became a music teacher at the Cleveland High School of the Arts, helping the next generation fall in love with music like she did so long ago. Hope those royalties are serving you well, Holly. Lastly, we have a rock idol from the 80s who made the most of his short time in the spotlight. A certain stripe of rock fan might remember Mike O'Donoghue as part of the duo Antidote, playing guitar alongside future megastar Rex Jordan, where the pair had a three-year run of top 10 singles. When Rex went solo in 1988, that's when O'Donoghue changed his image and name to Scorch Diesel, reflected in his only solo hit, the song Burn It Down. When the song hit number one on the Billboard charts, O'Donoghue's career mostly stalled, his next and last album failing miserably. He's now living in Cleveland, running a pizza parlor down the street from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But does the glory from his only hit really belong to him? Rex Jordan recently filed a $10 million lawsuit against O'Donoghue, claiming it was him who wrote the music and lyrics to burn it down. Jordan, a multi-Grammy winning recording artist, is expected to appear in court with O'Donoghue in three months, right after he is inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now why do we talk about all four together? Well, as it turns out, these artists are longtime friends, having met and bonded at a Cleveland music festival in 1999. Time may have been kind to their friendship, but will it be kind to their hits? That still remains to be seen. This has been One Hit Wonderland. For MTV News, I'm Erica Nichols. Stay woke. <laughs> out of One Hit Wonderland. <laughs> Hello, welcome to O'Donoghue's Pizza. How can I help you? O'Donoghue, why does that sound... Irish? It's because I'm Irish. Yes, we make pizza. No, we don't have anything potato related. I'm sick of the jokes, so just knock it off. <laughs> familiar. I was gonna say why does that sound familiar. And I don't appreciate being spoken to like that. Sorry, it's been a long day. What do you mean it's been a long day? Nobody's been in here besides the two of us. And with customer service like that, I'd be surprised if you got any business besides the day of induction. You need to chill the hell out. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Rex Jordan's actually being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh my god, I know he is so talented. I have every album he's ever released. I can't imagine how talented a person you have to be to just be anywhere near Rex Jordan. Oh, without a doubt, he might have been in one of the best bands that ever lived. He's got the voice of an angel. And he's an even better songwriter. I swear, I, don't, I can't imagine how talented you have to be to have literally never written a bad song. No one deserves to be in that hall more than Rex Jordan. Look, 
I'm a business owner, so I have the right to refuse service to anyone I please. So if you want to eat here, keep Rex Jordan's name out of your mouth. Maybe you should talk a little quieter. Maybe, Terry. Or maybe Rex Jordan banged this asshole's wife back in the oh, 80s. Really? Oh. I'm not married, actually. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, Donahue! Scorch Diesel! This is the guy who played in Rex at the start of his career! Oh my god! I get it now. You're upset because you're finally being sued for your one hit. Okay, would you just stop talking about Rex goddamn Jordan? I don't think I'm asking for much here. No, you don't get to treat us like garbage because you're upset you got caught stealing. You're pathetic. Come on, Terry, let's go. <laughs> Donahue's Pizza. <laughs> Ooh, Holly, slow down. You found him? Where has he been? All right, I'll, I'll see you guys soon. How the hell did he get into the Browns locker room? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you're here, bye. How'd you bail him out so fast? I used my allowance for this month. There goes my weekly perm fund. I saw the clone of myself in the flashing box. I went to the football man to help me kill him. <laughs> what are you talking about? The MTV segment. He must have seen himself and gotten scared. The <laughs> only is a cruel. But fair, alien queen. <laughs> well, that explains it. Did you see the show, Mac? Yes, I saw it. It was fun. Fine. I thought it was amazing. I can't believe someone decided to do a whole segment just on us. Yes, if anyone still watches MTV, they'll be real interested in four formerly famous musicians. You know the internet's a thing now, right, Mike? I don't know. I'm with Mike on this one. Ex-famous musician isn't the best look for a preacher's wife. Really, DJ, you always loved the spotlight. Really ready to close the door on such a big part of your life? I don't know. In the time since then, I'd like to think I've developed a little bit of modesty. I'm just not looking for that type of attention anymore. Well, at least you don't have the reputation of John Oates and a song. You know what? I changed my mind. That, that segment was full of shit. It's all right, Mike. This whole thing will be sorted out in a few months in court. You have proof that you wrote for it down, right? Well, I had proof. What do you mean? I may have lost the napkin I wrote it down on. Why'd you write it on a napkin? It was all I had at the time, and besides, Billy Joel did it, and he turned out fine. Mike, were you trying to be like Billy Joel? No, no, th that's not the point. And besides, you all know I wrote it, right? The Elder Gods will reveal all. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to just sit idly by while the general public thinks my greatest accomplishment was a lie. And it's not just about the money. I mean, back in the antidote days, I had everything I wanted. I had attention, a, a reputation, records, and all because people were listening. If only I could get them to listen again. Maybe we can't. And it's all thanks to that MTV segment. What are you talking about? This is the first major exposure we've gotten in years, which means it's the perfect time for us to make a comeback. And how would we do this? Start a record label. Think about it. The best way to return to relevance in this industry is to start making music again. Plus, it would give all of us the chance to get back into songwriting. That's actually not a bad idea. And if we release a couple successful songs, people will actually think I wrote my own music. Wait a second. I can barely run this pizza shop. How are we supposed to run a successful record label? Well, you managed to stay afloat this long, mate. Something of an accomplishment. Christ, man. Welcome back to the land of the living, bud. And while I appreciate it, no, it's not an accomplishment. This place is located between the only four landmarks in this city that make it relevant. And even that can't bring in enough traffic to keep my head above water. Well, it could be worse. You could be living under the foot of the second coming of Joe Oski. Hey, that was uncalled for and you know it. Hey, I knew when, you, when I met him that he'd never really seen a cosmic entity, but you married him anyway. If I was still affiliated with the Church of Cthulhu, I would pray for your eternal happiness. Listen, <laughs> I know this is coming from a good place, but I found my eternal happiness through my marriage and my relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And anyways, <laughs> we got bigger fish to fry. So Mike can't run a business to save his life. I can't. I've organized way bigger things than this at the high school. 
As for this, we can take down the pizza stuff and make it our official offices. And how are we going to pay for this? Well, I guess I could ask the Reverend if he fund it. He's always saying he wants me to have a hobby. I remember a time when you didn't need anyone's permission to do anything. I don't face you the idea of being tied to this man's ill-gotten gaze. And furthermore... Wait, can you ask him? Yeah, but you should Wait, if we're really going to do this, uh, we're going to need more exposure than just crimson's insanity. I prefer the term eccentricities. <laughs> anyway, um, I still have one favor left from my, my old producer. You know Paul Williams? I was planning on saving it just in case the Browns ever made the Super Bowl, but... I think I can use it to get this off the ground. That is perfect, Mike. Besides, the Browns are never going to make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> You'll be holding on to that favor until the end of time. If you'd let me finish, I was going to say my husband will probably give us the money, but only if we give the label good, a good Christian name and good Christian values. <laughs> Easy. Last chance records. Really? That's not on the nose enough? Can you blame me? And besides, by the time we release a couple successful songs, it'll be too late for him to get his money back and disassociate from our unholy ways. I don't know if I feel comfortable lying to my husband. <laughs> oh, what the H-E double hockey sticks! Let's do it! <laughs> I can't believe it! We're actually going to do this! From this point onward, I no longer live in the darkness of a dumpster's behind Quiznos! <laughs> under the oven. It's warm there. <laughs> the gas is off. It's only really dangerous if, if someone lights something. Speaking of which, Crimson, you should probably just sleep in the fridge. I resent that. I've never burnt anything down. On purpose. Besides, my acumen for pyrotechnics led us many adventure back in the day. Yeah, who could forget the fireworks display at DJ's wedding? And how they blew up the gazebo. <laughs> now there's a metaphor. Here, try and sober up. What are we gonna do with him? What do you mean? Do you remember when he hopped on the devil worshiping bandwagon a few years ago? Because the Reverend does. He so we gotta keep him out of here until we get the rest of our money. He drank enough booze last night to put an elephant in a coma. What else can we do? Hey, Crimson, if we're gonna start a label, then we'll need some talent, right? I suppose. Yeah, so <coughs> I need you to go find us a band. Five members at least. And don't come back until you do. You can go out the back door, it's okay. An assignment? By the power of the lizard who granted me my eternal youth, I'll do it! <laughs> eternal youth? I buy it. See ya, and remember, five members! So be it. I'm off. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Look who I brought. Well, hello there, Holly. Hi, Reverend. Nice to see you. And Michael, I've yet to see you inside the congregation. Yeah, well, I've, uh, I've had a little business problem on my mind lately. Why, well, my boy, if I knew you were in such dire straits myself, I would have helped you out. Now, what kind of problem are we talking about? A $10 million kind of problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know if it were any other, Michael. Well, you see, Reverend, <laughs> we were hoping that the record label could save Mike from bankruptcy. Um, these would be our offices. We have our phone. I'm the COO. Mike's the CEO. All we need is a little money so that we can write songs and keep the lights on. And some studio space so we can record. I see. Using good Christian worth ethics to solve earthly problems. And in the songs, too, they'll sing his praises, believe you me. Everybody's just raring to get to work, so what do you say? Well, I see no problem here. Seems like all y'all are on the right track, so I'll just go ahead. I have found the greatest band in the world. What? What's this devil doing here? You found the band this quickly? Uh, yes, and here they are. Crimson, those are five roaches! You see what I mean? They can play so many instruments. But not too many. 
over again. I thought this was a God-fearing label. What's this saint worshiper doing here? Uh, demon worshiper, Reverend. In fact, <laughs> let me summon one of them right now. Beer tooth, beer tooth, beer tooth. <laughs> to hear the skinny every day from Miss Debbie Joe. God be with y'all. God bless you. Thank you so Goodbye. much. <laughs> well, we're living to fight another day. Fighting uphill. The Reverend's still gonna want to see something for his money. Right, TJ? I don't know. He's thrown away thousands on silly stuff before, but since he knows us, he's gonna want a little more. Who cares? We've got funding. We've got talent. All we need now is a little publicity. Do you have a PR manager at the church? Yeah, but she's too costly for us. And anyway, Walter condemned her son to hell, so she's not on speaking terms with me. <laughs> what did he do? Read Harry Potter. <laughs> this will be a tough one, then. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky? Lucky, yeah. Maybe a TV show will call up and say we're a viral hit. <laughs> oh, Donahue's be... Last chance records. This is Mike. Hi, Mr. O'Donoghue. I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Erica Nichols from MTV News. We spoke a while ago for One Hit Wonderland. Uh, yeah, I remember. How are you doing? It's the girl from MTV. Put her on speaker. I'm doing just great. In fact, the segment we did on you guys got over 10 million hits on YouTube since it aired. People are so excited to see you guys. What kind of people? Mostly folks who thought Crimson was missing and you were sued to death. <laughs> Is that so? Uh, so what made you call? My producer got an email from Paul Williams yesterday. He told me that you, Holly Weiss, DJ Carpenter, and Crimson Duke are putting together a record label? Uh, we are. We just got our funding, actually. It's called Last Chance Records. That's what Paul said. It sounds like a great story and we'd love to come by and film a follow-up segment. Follow up. Uh, by all means, we'll do it. Great. How about March 28th? We'll be in town for the Hall of Fame inductions. That's in two weeks. Two weeks is great. Uh, we'll see you then. I'll send you the address. And we'll be there at 8 a.m. See you then, Mike. Endure! <laughs> <laughs> we'll be on MTV again, and not as has been this time. This will be so good for us, guys. And check it out. <laughs> What's that, my legal paperwork? No, songs I've been writing. Uh, we can show it to the crew when they come here. Holly, these are real good. I'd love to sing a couple. And I'd love to hear them. I have a rock one right here that requires a lot of personality, so I thought of Crimson. My ears are burning. Where's the fire? <laughs> Silly, I have a song for you. What do you think, Mike? These are good, but but they need some work. And if we're really going to do this, we're going to need songs from everyone. We've only got two weeks before MTV comes, so let's get to work. Mike, I know this might not, but with you, 
This might not be what you were expecting, but it's what I've written. I'm not the same girl I was all those years ago, sobbing over the lifeless body of my dead horse, and well, my art's gonna reflect that change. Well, regardless, it's just not a great song. Just because it's Christian doesn't mean it has to be as bad as the Christmas shoes. Hey, well, first of all, that song is a master... All right, all right, no, that song is terrible. But the insults are not necessary. So you're all, buddy. Sorry, I just... I'm gonna go check on Holly. All right, try not to lose your temper with her. She's been working nonstop since we started, Brock. Don't worry, I have it under control. Sure you do. Oh, Mike, I was waiting until I was finished to surprise you, but I'm so excited that I just can't hold it in any longer. I've been working on a song for you. What? You, you didn't have to put all that work in for me. You could have written something for yourself. I know I could have, but I just felt like I was on to something. And there's no one else who I'd rather have sing this. What are you waiting for? Take a look. Uh, it's, it's great. Uh, I, I like what you did here. It's just, I don't think it's my style. What do you mean? I usually have a tone I shoot for, and this just doesn't match up. It, it's good, good, but I just don't think it's me. Oh, um, I understand. I'll make some edits, and then I'll show you again later. No, you don't have to do that, actually. Um, can I see some of your other stuff? Yeah, sure. Another Christmas song? Holly, I know that's your specialty, but a Christmas album isn't going to save my reputation and win my lawsuit. Look, we only have a couple days before MTV comes, and we have to have something worth actually performing, where we're all going to look like idiots on TV again. Mike, I know you're under a lot of stress right now. We all are. And I know you have more at stake than any of us, but we're not trying to steer you wrong, OK? So just think before you act so cold. No one is as cold as I, for I have been napping in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure giving you a run for your money. Is he going on about song quality again? I swear, Michael, you're starting to sound like a broken record. Are you serious right now? No. You're right. I just really stressed out. I'm going to go outside. You guys keep working. You're doing great. Deep breaths, friend. Everything's all right. <laughs> wow. I gotta say I'm impressed. I mean, I always knew you were an incompetent musician, but now you can't even feed your own addiction anymore. Some things never change. What are you doing here, Rex? Just getting a lay of the lamb before the big day. See how the common folk live. You know how it is, seeing as you're one of them. Oh, come on, Mike. I came here to see if the rumors were true. Rumors? Paul Williams dropped me a line the other day, Mike. Told me about your new pipe dream. It looks like you really did it. You found the only people more incompetent than yourself to try and make your big comeback with. You never really ceased to surprise me with how pathetic you can be. Not pathetic enough to sue someone and attempt to steal their work. Or not tip my hookers. That's business, Mike. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta cut ties with the people who don't matter if you wanna cover your own tracks. You know, I still have no idea why you didn't sue me for stealing all your songs when I went solo. But I can't just leave that loose and untied. Also, I gotta imagine it's gonna be pretty hard for you to hire a lawyer to sue me once you're homeless. Also, who tips their hookers? Did they do an extra good job or something? <laughs> Look, you're, you're not gonna win that lawsuit, Rex. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. Let's be honest with ourselves, Mike. Your life is a damn mess. Your only friends are a bunch of has-beens who used up the only modicum of talent and order powers that we gave them, and, and on one fucking song each, you can't even keep a pizza parlor afloat. How are you going to put together a legal defense? No, no, scratch that. How do you even put together your outfit every morning? This was over before it started. You know it. So do I. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a few press conferences to go to. 
I want you to keep trying your best, Mike. It wasn't enough before and it won't be now, but it's always fun to watch. Woo. of almost two weeks, we haven't managed to come up with one song worth actually performing. No one here is pulling their weight, and, I, and I'm getting sick of it! Oh, come on, Mike. Oh, don't talk to me, you bumpkin! Oh. Why don't you go write another song about Jesus? Or, or horses? Or horse Jesus? <laughs> well, Michael, I hardly think any of that's true. You're one to talk about the truth, Crimson. You've managed to convince the whole world that you're some English punk. We all know you're from Iowa. Uh, Ouch, man. Mike, <laughs> you, need, you need to stop. I need to stop? What do you think, my problems will be solved with a choir singing them? No. Why did I even trust people who reached their peak <coughs> when writing a Christmas carol, a, a bad acid trip, and a song about fucking a horse? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna go upstairs, and nobody come talk to me until you write something that's actually decent. So help me, the Lord better wash his mouth out with soap. I don't understand. What's gotten into him? Don't take it to heart, sweetie. Men wrap themselves up in big projects and turn into drill sergeants. My husband does it all the time. How do you handle it? Oh, just let him sleep it off and try to resist the urge to smother him with a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be back to normal in the morning, and by then we'll have a few songs that are beyond amazing. I bet he'll feel pretty stupid when he sees them. I have completed my song about marrying a squirrel at a Denny's. The <laughs> 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 Grammys, the spirits told me it will be so. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in your salvage. I've given you everything I have, Anubis. I will not give you my soul. <laughs> Time for a fresh start. Let's burn it down. oven just, I don't know. <coughs> Wait, how did an oven start a fire so quickly? There must have been something in it. Like I said, I, I don't know. When I woke up, my desk was empty. All of my socks were gone. Did either of you get any of yours? I mean, I was on the ground, but... <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it, my desk was clear, too. Not a scrap of paper on it. Mike, what did you do? What are you talking about? You said the oven would only start if something was in it. And you were the only one awake when the fire started. I... I was trying to commit insurance fraud. Where are the songs, Mike? I can explain. You son of a bitch! I can't believe you did this! After everything we've done for you, this is the thanks we get! You're a monster! You're a disgusting monster! It's all right. Everything's gonna be all right. Mike, you've got some serious thinking to do. Some serious reckoning. I suppose it's only fitting. Another home burnt ashes. Beetlejuice truly shows no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a fucking... 
stinking building and it still smells like garlic. <laughs> Holly, Holly, I... Don't. Don't what? I didn't come here to talk, so don't. Holly, I'm sorry. I don't care. What? I said I don't care. If you don't care, then what are you doing I'm here? trying to see if my binder made it out. Just tell me if you put it in the oven or not. Okay. If our songs were so bad, they drove you to accidental arson, then fine. There must have been somewhere. What? There must have been somewhere I could have had another hit. Was it 91? Are you insane? You just set a building on fire, used your friend's hard work to start it, saw your last chance burn to the ground, and you're wondering why stardom passed you by. I had everything to make it work. I had a reputation, a public <laughs> presence. I made connections. I hustled. Jesus, would you get over yourself? Oh, like you know what it's like to hustle for your big break. You got famous off of writing one cliche song about a crappy city. At least I recognize my song wasn't that great. How's yours held up, Mozart? Spare me the false modesty. You get a royalty check every year. I'm lucky if I get one each decade. You know, I think I know why this is pissing you off so much, Mike. Oh, really? Yeah, because even with your connections and your public presence and your reputation, I still had something that you never had. And what's that? A backup plan. Yeah, you didn't think of that, did you? Too absorbed with sex, drugs, and Reaganomics to think practically. But for DJ and Crimson and me, fame just happened. DJ was a charm school kid who sang in the right honky tonk one night. Crimson just wandered around Iowa until someone noticed how unique he was. And I was getting my PhD in music theory. We all just fell into it and went along for the ride as long as it would take us. But for you, Mike, you may have liked playing, and you may even be good at it. But that just wasn't enough for you, was it? I guess you and I just define success differently. Yeah, I've got a day. In a way, though, I've been preparing ever since I left Antidote. Preparing with all of my stuff? Well, I used it better than you would have. And yeah, when it ran out, there might have, looked, might have been a little struggle. But you'd be shocked at how dull the writers can be. How they'll just sign their souls away to make sure the songs are heard. Court battle's not going to be fun, Mike. You got to know that much. And that's why I'm here. What? I was thinking, we could avoid all this, right? I'll drop your charges, clear your debts, give you an honest-to-God living. And in return, you write for me again. Write for you. I mean, can't have your name on any of the stuff, of course. But at this point, can you really afford to say no? Or do you all just live off pity in one-hit wonderland? <laughs> hey, leave him alone. He's had a long day. Cleveland Christmas girl? I haven't seen you anywhere since 95. Cut the shit. Mike's not in the mood and he's not gonna help you. <laughs> you don't know that. You're right, I don't. But even though he's an asshole, he's still honest. That's something he can claim that you never could. Honesty, huh? You're a Jewish girl who wrote a Christmas song. You're gonna lecture me about honesty? Please, please. Not, not the time, Mike. <laughs> Mike can do whatever he wants, sure. But if I had it my way, I would work for someone who screwed me over stole his way to the top, and is offering me the bare means of survival. At least I'll have a place to sleep. I'd rather be broke and get a good night's sleep than stay awake all night worrying about all the lies I've told. Judging by the bags under your eyes, you haven't slept in 30 years. <gasps> you take that back! Oh, and vain too! Wow, Mike, you really got the complete package here. I'm surprised you didn't turn out worse playing second fiddle to David Blowett here. That wasn't even good! You think I care? Why don't you go back to the Ritz Carlton or wherever and pick on someone your own talent level? I'm sure Vanilla Ice must be around. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> your lucky old girlfriend over there didn't spoil your chance. Think about what I said and give me a call. And I'll be at the 
the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> You better not be calling him back. Don't worry, I won't. Can I ask you a question? One question. Fine. Was he right about you being Jewish? Uh, yeah, on my dad's side. Oh. Didn't know that. Not a lot of people do. Uh, that's never happened to me before. What? I've never had anyone defend me. Not my agents, my publicists. Not anyone. Anyone who mattered, you mean? Yeah, I guess. You know, Mike, I'll give you this. You said you'd burn it down, and you did. Holly! Uh, wait. Thank you. Uh, you really do mean a lot to me. I think you are ignoring me. Oh my god. I, I honestly don't even know. What the fuck am I saying? Uh, uh, ignore that last part. Uh, so, please, uh, just, just give me a call back. I really need to talk to you. I'm... I, look, please, come on, just, just pick up! Look, this hotel is so cheap, it doesn't even have a bed, just a fucking crooked couch! <laughs> oh my god, please, you know, you could just pick up, okay? It's not that hard, you just have to, to press the green button! Same woman, five times between the hours of midnight and 2 a.m. I'm officially pathetic. Ugh. God damn it. Hello? Look, if you're here to rob me, you're going to be real disappointed at the amount of valuable shit I have, so just do us both a favor and kill me. <laughs> a bold strategy. <laughs> Sarcasm will have no effect against Martians. Crimson, is that you? It is I, Joseph Warrior. Where have you been and what are you doing here? I discovered a colony of cats outside of Long John Silver's. They're leaders through ritual combat. Of course you did. I was a fair but firm ruler. I like to think my reign was one of prosperity. However, it was cut short my cat subjects realized I could not herald a son. <laughs> It seems Martian cat people ray was ineffective on me. Did you try to have sex with an alley cat? <laughs> what is sex? <laughs> Perfect. Anyway, uh, what are you doing here? I have come to serve as your guardian angel, much like that cricket was to this small wooden boy. <laughs> That's great, but I think you took seen too many tabs of LSD back in the day. I really screwed up, and there's nothing that I or any sane person can do about it. Including you. Your, your doubt of the power of my mind's eye is disheartening. However, your remorse is pleasantly surprising, and it gives me reason to believe your friendship can still be salvaged. Allow me to tell you a story. Get off of my couch! You've been living in an alley for like two days! And when's the last time you showered? I clean myself as the cats do. <laughs> Long ago, I found myself in a situation not different from yours. You see, after I released my first and only hit, I grew ambitious. I wanted to prove that I had the staying power in this music industry, that I wasn't just some fad that would fade away in the obscurity. So, 
I fired my backing band and replaced them with spiders. I spent months, nay, years training these spiders, <laughs> teaching them to make music with my cosmic powers. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. One spider ate another spider's head off, she became pregnant, had to leave the band to take care of her kids. <laughs> I got back in contact with my back backing band and offered them a chance to work with me once more. But they refused. They felt betrayed that I replaced them with spiders. They felt that I stomped out their dreams in a half-baked attempt to propel my own career. I didn't know what to do. These people weren't just abandoning me, they were my friends. They just didn't have as many legs as I would have liked. <laughs> so I did the only thing I could think of. Performed a concert with my incomplete Spider-Man. I remember that concert. It was a disaster. Indeed. But in other ways, it was a success. You see, my old band saw that they meant more to me than music, fame, or even fancy pieces. They forgave me, and I was old once more. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think I actually understand. So, how do I fix it? Well, that is up for you to decide. My work here is done. I will now upload my subconscious to the mothership. <laughs> DJ. No, 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 you don't hang up. Look, look, I, I want to talk to everyone. Um, could you meet me at the, the well, former office at about uh, 10 of 8? And could you let Holly know too? Thank you. Sorry, I can't imagine. No, that. you can't, dum dum. So whatever you got here better be important. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> bud. I take it my advice was heeded. More than you know, Crimson. <laughs> oh, Michael, I'll always remember our night together. <laughs> so the question must be asked: Where's Holly? I talked to her an hour ago on the phone. She didn't tell me if she was coming. It'll just be better for all here. What will we do? <clears throat> Holly! Hey. Hey. Um, so, do you guys know what today is? Sunday? Uh, the day a fraud gets inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Feast of Cthulhu? <laughs> <laughs> no. It, it's March 28th, the day that MTV comes. I gave this, I gave them this address, they said they'd be here at 8, it's 7.56, so they'll be here any minute. Mike, what are you thinking? They're going to show up to a burned-out building. And four business owners without a business. Yes, and we'll probably all look like fools, but that doesn't matter. When, from the moment we decided to put this record label together, I didn't focus on what was important. Profits and fame wouldn't have made Last Chance Records important. It was special because of the people that made it. So, MTV is going to come today. They're going to see that all we have is the burnt husk of a building and a bunch of charred paper. And when they ask why, I'm going to tell them what I did. It'll probably ruin my reputation and might hurt my defense against Rex, but I don't care. You three are the most important people in my life, and I need to do a better job of showing it. I'm sorry that I haven't so far. And if you don't forgive me, I'll understand. Really going Let's go, people! We're burning daylight! Uh, Erica, uh, glad you could make it. Uh, Mr. Donahue! Yes, well, we're all ready. Ready? The follow-up segment. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Donahue, but we're out here to cover some bigger news. The inductions tonight. No, not that. 60 songwriters just filed a class action lawsuit against Rex Jordan. As we speak, He's being arrested for theft of intellectual property. 
Speaking of which, uh, we're looking for the Ritz Carlton. Do you know what's the past way? Uh, down three blocks on the right. Thanks, Mr. Duke. No hard feelings, Mr. Donahue? Hard feelings? No! Go get the bastard! Thanks. We got a story, people! Mike, were you really going to admit to burning our work on television just to prove that you care about us? Yeah. Yeah, I was. But it, it wouldn't have been enough to make up for what I did. I don't know what to say. Maybe just say that I can get another chance to make things right? You've done more than you could realize. I forgive you. As do I. You gave me the best night's sleep I've had in decades. And for that, I owe you my life. <laughs> it is custom of my <laughs> own planet. <laughs> Mike O'Donohue, I prayed mighty hard we'd come to your senses after that stunt you pulled. I'm just glad you come to see what's important after all. Debbie Joe Carpenter! Where in Sam Hill have you been? Did he know you were coming? I didn't think it mattered. Am I glad I put that tracker on your Cadillac? You will come home right this instant. I will not have my wife associating with miscreants like these. No! What did you say to me? I said no, Walter. Like it or not, I share something with these people that I can never share with you. And that is a passion for bringing people together without scamming them. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> She's being hysterical. We've all had her back. You've got a lot of nerve calling me hysterical. I funded your church because I believed you'd do right by people. But lo and behold, you've just used it to hoard money from me and from everyone who bought into your warped versions of Jesus' teachings. It's your money? Sure, it's my money. He just didn't tell me once we got married I wouldn't be allowed near it. When I met him, he was dirt broke. And now he has the gall to give me a monthly allowance and insult my friends, who I've no longer anyways. Wow. Yeah, I'm just glad he signed a prenup. And I can have that boarded, you know. <laughs> okay, and I'll just tell this other Baptist that you used to be a swinger. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Try me. I have saved your ass so many times, I can kick it to the curb just as easy. Walk away, Walter. give us a clear vision on how to navigate this. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Oh, good morning, Terry. Come out to see the induction? Nah, I went to go see Rex Jordan's Burp Walk. Oh, how was it? Awesome. He's crying. Oh, <laughs> man. Terry, these are my friends. Everyone, this is Terry Glass. She's a student of mine. Wait a minute. Are you Crazy Duke? So I'm called. It's a pleasure to meet you guys. Oh, my gosh! I love your music. It's so swindling. Wait a minute. Are you DJ Carpenter? Why, well, yes, I am, darling. Oh my gosh! I thought you were the one who inspired me to take up horseback riding! <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, knew who you were the entire time, Mr. O'Donoghue. It's just that I didn't want to tell my friends because I thought they'd make fun of me if they knew I liked you. You see, my parents met at an Asian concert and they always told me how awesome you were. I always liked you a heck of a lot better than Rex Jordan, especially your solo albums. Thank you, Vanna. That means a lot. You know, guys, Terry's one heck of a songwriter. Yeah, got like 50k on YouTube, but nobody wants to sign my demo. Well, if you got the songs, then we could rent some space for a recording. Really? Yes, and I could play drums, and my spider band could back you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to our CEO. What do you say, Mike? Should Last Chance Record sign its first artist? I think we can help you out.
So now we just have um, a special gift for the seniors that are leaving us. Um, so, do you have all their names? No. Does someone, have, does someone have a program we can use? <laughs> okay, so before we start doing this, um, I'd like to say something about this gift in particular, because I'm extra, so of course there's meaning behind it. Um, this particular group, I'm gonna cry, of seniors have been so instrumental in my college experience. They took me in as a scared freshman and I just love them so much. So, the yellow flowers signify uh, platonic love, obviously. <laughs> and then white flowers oftentimes mean new beginnings. So I thought that was fitting too. And as always, everything must end. So I'm sorry, you guys are only club members until the last flower dies. It's fake. <laughs> <laughs> some of the names and if you're in the audience just come up and get it um some people could not be here tonight um so we'll still read their names but they just won't get we had other things going on i'm sorry uh, but we do love our seniors so the first up um, who could not be here is amanda Al um, adenoffy our next senior is uh, joey arzino for Kyle D'Angelo. special also to me um, and our outgoing president Kayla Vick. another hug yes. <laughs> 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 um, and then next up um, we have our outgoing auxiliary um, exec board member she created a new exec board position this year so we haven't super really named it yet but Amanda Stridio VP Rose Weldon. Uh, we'll bring the lights up as soon as someone gets back there, but thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, we'll see you next. 